right, and I am going to go live now. We are live. Hi, folks. We're uh, going to get started in just a second. Uh, as always, just going to give everybody a chance to log in and uh, get settled before we start. So it'll be just a minute. And that's my cat crying, if you heard that. <laughs> He's ready for dinner. Hey folks, just to, uh, for those of you who are just logging on, I uh, just wanted to mention that we are waiting just a second uh, to give folks a, a chance to get logged in and we're going to get started in, in a minute. Okay, I think we are ready to go. So hi everyone, my name is Nick Marshall and I'm the manager of exhibitions and programs at the George Eastman Museum. I'm excited to have artist Sitlali Fabian with us this evening to kick off the first artist talk of our new spring series, Future Present, uh, which is a series of virtual artist talks with early to mid-career artists and photographers who are exploring some of the most pressing issues of our time in pushing the boundaries of image making and visual culture today. Our next talk is on April 22nd with Sam Cannon, and we'll wrap up the series on May 6th with John Henry. You can register for, uh, through, uh, I'm sorry, you can register for these events through our website uh, at any time leading up to the talk. So we'll try and get a link out to you all uh, to make it easy for you to find those. Uh, and I would encourage you to join us for the next two. So on to tonight's program though, uh, Sitlali Fabian is a Yalateca Mexican visual artist and storyteller who uses photography to explore identity and its connections with territory, migration, and community bonds. Fabian's work has been exhibited internationally and her project Mestiza was selected as one of the New York Times Lens Blog's 13 stories that captured photography in 2018. Additionally, she is a member of the Women Photograph and Natives Photograph Collectives and is, a and is a National Geographic Explorer with the project I'm From Yellow Log, a photo essay to explore the development of our Zapotec identity. Additionally, uh, I, I would just like to note that uh, Sit Lolly lived here in Rochester, uh, where I'm broadcasting from. Uh, was, uh, Sit Lolly, was it in 2015 or 2016? 2016, right? 2015. Okay, uh, uh, and while Sit Lolly was here, uh, she received her certificate in photographic preservation and collections management at the George Eastman Museum. Uh, so we're happy to continue uh, our uh, ongoing uh, relationship and uh, collaborations with Sit Lolly here. Uh, if you have any questions throughout today's talk, please submit them through the Q and A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The chat function is open, but we will not be monitoring it for questions. If you want to type uh, in on the chat, we really kind of use that for just saying hello, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, but if you do have any questions uh, for Sitlali, please submit them through the Q&A. We'll, I'll come back on and uh, go over those questions with Sitlali after the presentation is over, but you can submit questions at any time. Uh, we are recording today's webinar and we'll be putting it on our YouTube channel in the coming week. So if you'd like to go back and watch again or share with others, you'll be able to access it along with our other webinars and video content through YouTube. And you, as you're probably noticing, there is a closed captioning function uh, on Zoom that is turned on. Uh, if you would like to turn it off, you can click on the CC uh, closed caption icon. It's 
probably either at the bottom or top of your screen and you should be able to disable it. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sitlali, who is very kind enough to be joining us uh, late at night in London, where she's currently living. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm very happy to share my work in this space. I wish I could be in Rochester in person, but I'm glad, glad to take the best from these platforms and spread the world wider. Rochester, the museum, uh, but obviously my friends from there have a very special, special place in my heart and I miss you all. It is an honor to share my work and experiences here. Uh, as Nick said, I'm Citlali Fabian and I'm a photographer and visual storyteller from Oaxaca, Mexico. I started in photography while I was a teenager. Um, but well, since I was a kid, photography um, was around myself. I grew up and lived with my family for a few years in the second floor of my father's photo store. So in some kind of way, this experience marked my approach to photography and uh, my appreciation of, of the images and what implies to others. Today, I'm going to talk about my journey in photography, my experiences and creative processes. Yes, all that, but just for two particular projects, my Mestiza series and my, on, my ongoing project, uh, Ben Gerard. I'm from Yalala, um, which I uh, share with you later. I'll start with the Mestiza series. Uh, since I started to practice photography, making images has been my way to explore my own identity, to talk about my concerns and open us to dialogue and talk about our representation in images. When I say our, I mean uh, my people, my community, my family and friends. Um, how we see each other and with whom we feel identified. Um, Mestiza is the first body of work I created in collaboration with my family and friends, uh, my mom, my cousins, my, uh, the woman in my inner circle. Uh, it is a series that I started in 2014 while I was studying my master degree. At that time, I was studying and practicing 19th century processes. And around those years, maybe two years early in 2012, uh, was the first time I hear about the uh, Eastman Museum, back then the Eastman House. And from Mark Osterman and all the amazing workshops, collections, and all the things happening over there. Um, I was particularly attracted uh, by the Wet Lake Collodium process, so I, I was supported by a fellowship, a, a grant from my university and I took my first workshop there. And once I saw the marvelous results and incredible details obtained with the proper practice of the technique, I couldn't stop to throw wet plates. Uh, for those who has been able to see or practice this technique, you know, the glass plate details are astonished. I think I spent maybe five of seven days taking plates over a year. And obviously I was uh, mesmerized by the technique qualities. It took me a few months, a lot of talks with my friends and family, numerous experience photographing them to start to connect the threads. Another time I will share these sketches and the pre images with you. At that time, I was exploring different ideas of how to talk about femininity, identity, and our heritage. Something like the Mexican femininity heritage, which is a lot to put in one plate, or that's what I think. The word plates were giving me this blink to the past, not just because the technique is associated with some of the first expeditions and anthropologist records, but also because practicing this particular photographic act, the images themselves were able to transport us and connect us with some dormant part inside, inside us. 
19th century processes as the Gerritab with Blake Collodian, Albumen captured details uh, from a different light, uh, from a different part, part of the light spectrum. They are less sensitive to red, green, yellow colors, making brown skin as mine darker and showing every single detail and texture giving to these portraits an almost automatic travel to time. The sitters, my friends and family, needed to, to be in front of the lens from 10 seconds to one minute approximately. It is a very low photosensitive process. But this condition, this limitant of the process itself, make us feel very conscious about being portrait, about the photographic act, which I think is something like a performatic act. And also something that it is not as often practiced nowadays when photography is so immediate. One of my favorite memories and one that resonates over the course of the, the production of this series uh, happened in the second session um, of that I made with the idea of, of creating this series of portraits. And it happened with my friend Tanya, who you see in this plate. Uh, Tanya is a textile artist from Oaxaca, where I'm from, and a classmate of the master degree at that time. She had the most genuine and and beautiful expression when she saw her portrait the first time. And it was something like, oh my God, I look exactly as my grandmother. My uncles have, have told me all my life, but I never, I never seen it clearly as now. And I love this memory because Tanya expressing how this image impacted on her own appreciation confirm in some kind of way the purpose of this work, the possibility to recreate us or images or representation, but also giving us the choice to be active parts, creating these oneric images, to revitalize our heritage, of course, but most important to appreci appreciate that dormant part of ourselves. Then have a sip of I'm an indigenous descendant, and I affirm my, my identity as a Yalalteca. But I, while, while I was growing, this wasn't always that clear. I think it is especially hard to understand your identity, to feel and embrace yourself when it has been constructed from outside ideas. What makes you indigenous? In Mexico, it makes you an indigenous being able to speak a native language. In the States, as far as I know, you need to, to cover certain blood quantum, if I'm not wrong. My parents speak Zapotec, a native language, but because of all the repress, repression they suffered, they didn't teach me. This affects me, but also a lot of people of my generation. So it makes you question a lot about who you are. Also, while I was growing in Mexico, and in some ways still the same, it, it, uh, it is frequent to, to hear we are mestizos, the result of two cultures mixing. But Mexico itself, has more than 50 different indigenous nations. Which two cultures we were talking about? Also identifying us as mestizos, put, put in some kind of pedestal, the Spanish, the Spanish or Caucasian heritage, which honestly I'm not able to see, at least on the surface, on, on, on my face. I know we import or we force it to adopt a lot of traditions and manners. But as I'm sharing these concerns to you, 
I did to my friends and family. And it was a, a way to explore in this way these concerns and understand our identity and reshape this imaginary. While I was creating these portraits, uh, I wanted to connect us, all the diverse we are, and to honor the heritage that I've been talking about. To do it more evidently, I choose the corn husks, which you can see more in some of the images to create that element that connect us, that crown us, to create this flamboyant and dreamy environment, to refer to our pre-Hispanic roots, but also to create a connection, an inner connection. I believe that photography, utterly art in general, has, has this very deep uh, mission needs to question, needs to ask, needs to make us critic, to open us to dialogue, to vitalize and amplify voices. I know my concerns are shared with others like me, but when we don't talk about them, it doesn't mean it does, it, these concerns don't exist. It means they are repressed. I want to hear more voices, their experiences, this work is about that, to encourage us to see. And now to the next project. My current and ongoing project, Ben Yaral, Soy de Yalala, I'm from Yalala. It is what I call my life term project. And officially it started a few years ago, in 2017 when I finally started to put my images together. It sounds something obvious to do, considering I've been photography in my community and culture since I started to do photography more than 10 years ago. But it took me a long time to see what I was doing. To understand that this project, um, to understand that this project was the opportunity to create my family reunion, a way to understand my history, culture, identity, and maybe to help us, my paisanos, my family, myself included, to feel together over time and territories. Here is a first mix of samples, some images from my family archive, memories from my childhood, my parents and myself in the right top corner in La Villa in Mexico City. My, 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 my family, images from my grandparents and uh, image I in can manipulate in the middle. Uh, emotion left for that polaroid. I think this is because also I believe this is a uh, this is not a single writer's st story, so I want to put some some of the other parts. Something that was uh, a mainstone in my life uh, were the last years of of my grandma living with my parent with with my parents. Sorry. From our limited interaction, because she was a Zapoteco speaker and I, with a very few Spanish words, and I am a Spanish speaker with a very, very few Zapoteco words. Those are part of our colonization wounds. I found in my photography the excuse to communicate, to ask about her photos and life to travel more often to her home in Yalala, in the North Sierra in Oaxaca, where my parents are from as well. In the left, you can see her in my parents' house with uh, her, well, my mom's uh, sewing machine, but she uses it as her own. And on the right is my mom and her, the last time we, we spent, um, in, in her home in the, in the North Sierra in 2011. 
this project is for me the opportunity to talk about these experiences with my community or migration processes or connections or affective relationships. Here, a uh, digital collage, coll collage? <laughs> sorry, sorry for my mispronunciation, uh, of a photo that my dad took uh, at the end of the 2000s. Here you can see my numerous cousins with my, my abuelitos, my grandparents in, in their home. And in the back, you can see a black and white photo I took in June 2019. I wanted to show in this image the relation of my memories with time. And at, this, at the same time, how they are partially blurred, partially there, but not at the same time. This, this place has been abandoned since they, they passed away. So nature is taking the place and, and if, if walls could speak, how, how many amazing stories they will tell us. Here are some of my early images from 2011 as well of the wedding of my cousin Jacobo. And also a photo from uh, uh, my mom's box of image of one photo of one of the 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 of one of her cousin's wedding. I understood at that moment that I wanted to create. When I see these connections, I, I understood that I wanted to create a visual memory for us. Uh, everything else, everything started to fall in place when I, once I understood what this was need uh, that I have. And I started to notice also how my images were playing these dialogues with the images from my family archives. Subconsciously or maybe not, I, I've, I've been made, making these resemblances, maybe trying to keep alive these conversations with my grandma, seeing them connect them, connected, my images with the ones from the past. Another image uh, that dialogues, this is in the corner, also my grandpa, in the 80s in his workshop in Jalalak, in his home. And in the bottom is my uncle Fidel um, in 2017, uh, in his home also working, producing guaraches, that is a type of sandal commonly used in, in Jalala. This is my dear friend Juanito. He grew, grew up in Oaxaca City and we, we kind of shared some kind of also the, the, the journey and, and the, the experiences um, living and manifest, 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 living the manifestations of our identity. In my photos, as you could see, I portray my family and friends and I use different photographic media. I will show in this presentation mostly black and white images, but I also would like to show a few color images like this Polaroid image. Here is my dearest friend Sinkla with her um, sister Evelyn after they perform in a concert in Oaxaca City. They are part of uh, a one of the most known bands from my village and they are they are very good and my relatives the Ritz Monterey siblings my community has a very special relationship with music and dance and you will see a little bit of this over my work something really important to me is to have a, an object a tang tangible image and not just because uh, I, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't feel the same approach with digital. 
just because I think you also can create affective relationships with the objects and it is a, a way to treasure and give them a body. Uh, so just to explain you a little bit more about the regions that I've been covering with this project, um, I will show you this map. You can see uh, with the, uh, the red dot, Yalala, there is uh, in the in the Oaxaca North Sierra, and the blue spots are the places in Mexico, but also in Los Angeles, where are other big groups of my community. I think I will start to take you in a trip through the different places that I I've been taking these photographs. I'm going to show you for the for four of these places. I will start with this photo of Jalala. Um, as I said, it is in the North Sierra. This is a view from the tower, bell tower, sorry, from 2017. Just a few months after this, uh, they cover and install a huge dome over the basketball court. So the landscape it's it's different this photo is from last year before the pandemic just before the pandemic and in february that was the last time i went to to jalalek because um well they started a um very strict lockdown and also there is there, there is like a very different situation of health her uh, access system and it is not not the best time to to visit for sure this uh was uh, this time i went for the wedding of my cousin reina who is over there with her parents my uncle pinel and my auntie ustolia they are taking her to the church on her wedding day this is another photo of another cousin's wedding, but this was in 2018 and it was early in the morning of my cousin Mela wedding. And this one is one of my favorite photos because uh, for me it captures the essence of our community practices. What are you seeing here is a group of women, uh, guests in a wedding in Yalala and they are organized to make tortillas. I found fascinating how certain rituals flow very organic. Reciprocity turns the normal. I wish all traditions will be as nice and powerful. And this beautiful is Nestle. Nestle is my little friend who I made in one of these celebrations and she uh, chose and asked me to portrait her under this banana palm. I was very excited to let her direct her portrait. I think that's one of my treasures memories because she she was so so keen keen and, and active and in this portrait. And also my the uh, uh, portrait of my cousin Mela with her husband. Saul the day of their wedding and in this photo they are they are with uh, Mela's cousins Anna and Dalia who travel from LA to assist to their wedding. A band of Mexistlan that is another town uh, from the Mije area uh, they attend to perform a concert in one of our celebrations more photos of my cousin Mela wedding and from here I will take you to Oaxaca City. Uh, this was a photo from 2019, a celebration in Jalala neighborhood which is literally two blocks from my parents house. This is my uncle Evario in the middle dancing and I need to say that I ended up dancing with them as, as well because, well, that's why you, what you do on parties, right? <laughs> My cousins, Jorge and Rene Fabian, 
they moved to they, they moved back to Oaxaca City after being raised in Mexico City around 2015 and it is not a surprise for me that they will just fit in place and they started to participate in all the celebrations in all the the dance groups and different dance groups and, and different bands Here are my relatives Jimena and Marcia before we perform in the International Mother Language Day Festival in Oaxaca City. My dearest friend David, better known as Kaku, in 2014. My cousins Jesse and Christelle. Melina in 2018. All these portraits that uh, were taken during different celebrations in Oaxaca City, particularly in um, Yalala neighborhood in Oaxaca City. As you can see, all these images are the record of our meetings, our celebrations, the share of our joy. This was from the last time I was in a celebration in Yalala neighborhood in Oaxaca City in 2019 a little group of a, a group of little girls sorry uh, they are nieces and children of my friends and they were seated in the first line very close to the area where traditional dance dances and um, music were performed this was the scenario that they were watching and this last is the one from oaxaca city you can see here a group of children performing the traditional dance called Cuerudos. Uh, this is a group called Shalni, which means Celebration Day, and it is directed by my uncle De Bellio. As you can see, music and dance are very important part of our identity. I always say that we learn to dance or music first to walk and to talk. Um, and from Oaxaca City to Mexico City. The same dan dance, the same traditional dance, Cuerudos, but now here performed by a group from Mexico City. Something that I want to do with these images is to lose the sense of being, being in a specific location, to talk about our community not separated, but extended, in times where borders are imposed constantly, uh, why not try to erase them? In Mexico City as well, Don Prisciliano Celis leading the procession uh, in charge of the fireworks. Um, something that caught my attention in Cuauhtepec, which is part of Mexico City in the north. It is how close it is from, from the mountains. The landscape was a constant reminder of Oaxaca North Sierra. Surreal because you can see the skyscrapers close, well, far away, but close enough to see that the sea is just, just there. My uncle and auntie Lucas and Anna in Mexico City, uh, they are very involved uh, developing Zapotec language programs to revitalize um, the 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 teach and learning on young or not as young generations as myself uh, here are my little cousins the smallest from the fabian clan <laughs> uh, this was uh, from a reunion we have to celebrate a christmas party for our community in mexico city my grandmother lives uh, from my father's side lives in mexico city and she wanted to host a party for my community. We needed to make more than a hundred tamales that, that time, which was kind of a, a big task for people who are not used to cook that much. Um, a group of Jalaltec descendants in Cuauhtepec. And in this photo, you can see clearly the mountains that I was talking to you, that I was uh, referring before. Um, and this, this makes the, the, the feeling of losing the, the sense of where is this photo from. 
uh, another photo also from Mexico City, and these uh, are um, Yalalteco's descendants as well, after they perform another traditional dance called Negritos. And now I'll take you to LA. You can figure there is a different location because of the building behind. This is not typical, obviously, from Mexico, but it is typical from the States. And this was in Koreatown in LA. Uh, here they were performing also a traditional dance from the North Sierra. And um, it is, it is to me surreal to see these kind of things in, in some other latitudes. They were celebrating San Antonio de Padua, which is one of the main religious celebrations where I'm from. Uh, the Yalaltecos residents in LA used to organize events, previous the celebration, and for the celebration, uh, while I was there, I was, I was just amazed about the frequency of events, even more than two per weekend. Uh, some of them uh, are to collect funds to send back to the village or uh, for celebrations or for renewals. They, they are um, keeping connected also in this way. This is my friend Liz Slava with her auntie who came, came to visit LA from, from Yalala. And this is also in the same celebration in Koreatown, Los Angeles. My beloved uncle, uh, Conrado, his cousin of my grandma uh, from my father's side, sorry. Um, I can't believe how many people I have had the opportunity to meet and to discover they are childhood friends of my parents or, or my relatives. I knew my family was big, but this journey has had me the opportunity to, to meet a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. My aunt, but better call her cousin, Vero, uh, also in 2019. And from the same side of the family, my beautiful cousin, which is so young to call her cousin, better niece, uh, Roma in LA. She's part of a second generation of Yalaltecos born in the States. She's from the Albertus family, so she is the granddaughter of my uncle, Conrado. These last images are, that I'll share are different media. This one is also uh, a, photo, a photo embroidery of my sister and me from two separated photos. I found uh, these photos in my dad's store and I reunite them, reunite them in this piece. I complete the landscape depicting our motherland, where we came from, and also the culture we share. And in some way, the movement of our culture spreading and going around. This is a triptych of my mom and my grandma, uh, as they are my, my first guide in this process. Photography has so many layers. What it makes it meaningful to me is the connection I have with them, or memories hidden in the background. Like the story of my grandma scratched in my mom's wet play portrait that you can see in the middle. As native cultures, we carry our story, our history in our skin, deep in ourselves. It is time to amplify the relevance of these stories. This image is uh, of my mom's womb, belly. I mean, uh, it says, my first home and the safest. At the end, this project is about this journey going back to my roots, to my origins, to my motherland, and to my culture. This was a mix of some of the images that I've been working for, for this project. A little of my story. Uh, I hope you like it. And I'll share one last image of a photo mural. I, uh, was uh, I installed, was installed 
uh, in a collective effort with my friends from Studio Cadabra in Oaxaca City. It was uh, my, my parents and my friend and Alonso involved also in this in the, in the process of this this mural because they helped me to translate from Spanish to Zapotec this this text, who says something like, um, "If the wind takes us far away, my sisters will take care of our ancestors' heritage." And this is the portrait of Melina that you seen before in the slides. My dream is to take these images back to the places where they came from, to the public space, one day at a time. But uh, please keep an eye, because probably I will do a crowdfunding to do more photo murals. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity, Ushkena. Muchas gracias. And I think we are open for questions and to talk a little bit more. Yeah, thank you so much, Silali. That was amazing. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing with us. Um, so if, if anybody has questions for Sitlali, you can submit them through the Q&A button um, at the bottom, I, it should be at the bottom of your screen, maybe the top. Um, Sitlali, I'm gonna kick things, I feel like I have so many questions for you. Um, one of the things that I noticed, um, and I, didn't, I hadn't really noticed it with your work until this presentation, uh, where you had kind of paired the um, vernacular snapshots, the found snapshots with some of your contemporary, your, your current work. And there was a slide where you had, um, there was a Polaroid and one of your um, textile pieces on it. And I was wondering if there was any relationship between the, the cracks in the kind of fissures of the, of, the, of the Polaroid and the pattern that you use to, if you're, the pattern that you use to, to stitch into the piece. They, they, they're not, they're not the same. They're not like, it's not the exact same pattern, but it, I really liked seeing them next to each other. The, the kind of, in, especially as you're kind of talking about the life of these objects, the life of these things and the cracks are this like visible life of the photograph. Is that something that, am, am I just reading into this here? Is that something you've thought about? And I'm sorry, I, this just came to me. So I'm, yeah, curious. You, you, you mean the, the Polaroid of the two sisters? The no, this was, um, this was on one of the first slides that you had, like when you started talking about this series. Um, can you scroll back through? Yes, 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 I, I think I can just. Okay. Sorry, I needed to go. No, that's okay. Fast. This is quite quicker to go this way. Uh, right here. Um, yeah, right here. Then one in the middle. Yeah, so the piece, the blue piece, I'm moving my cursor over it like people can see my cursor um, no, the blue yes, piece in the middle and then the Polaroid above it that has those kind of crack patterns in it that it just was uh, there's this visual similarity between those cracking oh, of course yeah yeah of course they 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 they, they share um, they share a, a motive uh, and what I, what I wanted to do with this it is to refer to um, legend from from the village uh, not specifically in in the way that it it has been tell, but in this in this legend of how the the traditional outfit from from the women from Jalalek was uh, conceived or was um, created. It's it it um, the tale is something like uh, in the middle of the town before the Spanish conquer, there was a huge copal tree where the Zapotecs from, from Jalala pay tribute and give offers to the, to the, to the, god, to the god, god nature, to the, their godness. Uh, but when the Spanish arrived, they chopped the tree. And from the tree, a, uh, a lot of snakes came and some version says that a woman came from from the tree or it was a woman already there but the pattern on the 
I'm not sure if there is one. Yeah, the pattern of the we peel that it is this white kind of dress that you can see. The 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 snakes came through the the we peel and also two came on on the top of 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 her her head. This is not the best way to tell a story because I'm taking a lot of good parts of it but yes this is the relation that I was trying to represent of these uh, snakes and actually this is something like um, I, I call like a snake nest mm -hmm. because it, 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 it came from that and I, and I found fascinating how also the, the figure of the snake was in some kind of way uh, associated with evil to, to native cultures, which uh, for, for colonization processes, I mean, for Christianity and all that, but for pre-Hispanic times, it doesn't have that connotation. It is, it is uh, abundance, fertility um, symbol. So in this way, I was trying to, to recreate that. And also there, uh, we, we use a color, that have that kind of same of similar colors so it is it is yeah it was planet to to have this relationship between them got it um we are starting to get some really good questions and so i'm gonna i'm not gonna ask any more of my own questions um so uh one the first question that came in um how do people in your community or outside your community react to your pictures? Well, I, I try to, to share the most of them uh, online to the people that has uh, Facebook. Now we, that we have a lot of opportunity to share images through Facebook, to Instagram, we can share like more immediately there. Yeah. I haven't been able to go back, as I say, a GLA like in a year. But in, in each time that I uh, that we have a ga a gathering a celebration, I, I I I I always try my best to bring some of the images from previous events to them. I think from that experience, from that sharing, I had very good response because people people like to see them photos, right? People like to to have 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 that response have that I, I think it's the least i can do to to bring some of the images and and also um yes yeah, it's, it's just a, a a way to kind of pay back yeah. in 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 my opinion so from from that I, I i i just can say that i've been having good experiences from from the people that i'm being able to to share the images back and a lot of them are are asking for more photos now so i think that's that's a good thing right like when when people see the photos that or or others see i bring the photos it's like i, I want a photo too so it is i think that's the best i wish i wish i i could just go and just being asked to to take photos it will make it much more easy and it, se it seems like you've got a pretty big family uh uh that's uh, <laughs> uh um uh extend a pretty big extended family uh, has has photography brought you closer to them personally for you um, yes uh well i uh, as i said facebook i think uh, or social media in general had this chance to to connect to connect you with others right so after i started to to publish some of the images over there a lot of my family has reached to me on that on, on that media, and uh, I I'm being so lucky that I'm being able to spend time to, uh, with with some of them and to meet uh, some so to meet new friends and new not new family but family that I never had the opportunity to to spend time with, like in LA um, when last. Um, Three years ago, I I reached to some of my cousins and and family there, like properly talking or chatting at least, mm -hmm. and they knew about the photos and they they were very 
very excited to to see the photos and when i told them i'm going to la to take photos of the of 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 the community there they were like just come and and we'll take you whatever no or uh, you can stay here and it is it is yeah it has has given me the chance to to meet them and to sometimes even met friends of my parents from from their their childhood that i i really like that experience is because something that is very common in in my communities is when when you introduce yourself either they ask who are your parents or who were or are your grandparents and from that a lot of connections come from came come from came from or search i'm not sure how to explain this but a lot of times it's like oh my god i was playing basketball with your dad when we were young or we were part of the same band or we danced together in this place or your mom helped me to do this your grandma teach me that and it was it is just amazing to to hear all these these stories that never i never hear before i even know part, part parts of my parents that i i never never hear before so that's that's pretty cool yeah uh, our next question, you know, is is interesting because I, I it was sort of a question that I had, but I like the way that they're asking it, and, and I would tie it into, you know, the title of of the, your talk is "Who We Are: Decolonizing Visual Narratives." Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, thinking about that, the question was, "What is your opinion on non-indigenous, uh, example, uh, Mexican mestizos?" photographers photographing indigenous communities. How do their images differ from yours? Well, as, as I said, this is a personal journey, right? The difference is that obviously, uh, obviously as photographers, you create connections and you create relationships. What, what I'm showing here is a story that I that that never never has been able to be written by by some of us some of us I think now I can see other creators research people who is interested from from my from my community or communities uh, origin or originary communities in the world that are having the opportunity to show show what are their concerns what is their perspective and i think the most important that that we have the opportunity also and, and the, the chance to bring them back because it is not like come on I, I i receive an education in photography and i know there were some people before myself that went to my village and take photos in the 50s in the 60s of of just jalala in the north sierra but we are not just there it is not just just that the the the, the part that i wanted to show and the, the i don't i don't have anything against them because i'm pretty sure there is a, another another point of view another question to ask but for for my question is for 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 whom are these images what is the what is the final final um, place to these images? I was asked some some days ago if if I was dreaming to be in a muse, in a museum and and I honestly I'm not like it would be very cool because obviously that that gives gives some kind of of um, prestige to, to your work for sure but but it is it is not the purpose of this work and and i think i think it depends a lot of of what is what is the intention from my perspective right well i think that that's what's so interesting about the public the public pieces right i mean they're they're not it's not like something that can be collected it's something that by an institution or a museum or something i mean i guess I guess they could, but uh, they can support it. 
<laughs> but 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 that idea of public art i mean that's you know seeing that mural i'm glad that you shared that image at the end i really i really really love it. i mean it's just so stunning and it, i mean i love that the, the picture then kind of comes back to the community and is shared there and um i think it's a great way for the images to live um an, an, another sort of somewhat related question uh, that came in. Do you know of any other Mexican indigenous photographers? Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, I can recommend you just from Oaxaca, the work of Luvia Lazio and contemporary, I mean, and uh, also the Octavio Lopez. Uh, those are uh, two of, uh, uh, of my good friends uh, who who are also working on topics like this. Uh, Jorge Santiago is from Gelatao in Oaxaca, and he also has very, very good work. So I don't know if you want more names. These are my, my, my three uh, fellows from, from Oaxaca <laughs> that I can say. No, that's well, great. Watch on, on their work. Yeah, and who, who, who have been influences on your work? You know, there were the, the question came in about your influences. They're interested in enough if Graciela Iturbide or Flor Gaduño was someone who was would be of interest to your work or inspiration to your work. Or what art what photographers do you draw inspiration or what artists do you draw inspiration from? Well, obviously the the work of the work of um, of Graciela Iturbide is very known. Uh, from the images that I have, that have um, inspired me or have um, coached coach me clo more, more closely, definitely are the images from Lola Alvarez Bravo. I think so because she she was able to to take a lot of portraits uh, and images from from Yalala and. It was not just the images, actually. I think what I liked more about her was her diaries. She wrote a lot of, um, yeah, memories about her experience there. And it is just uh, lovely to, to transport you in words to, to a place where you used to see when you were a child. So, um, I, I think uh, her has been, her work has been like a, a, a key on, on my exploration to photography as well. Yeah. Um, what are the decolonizing strategies to circulate uh, your images and knowledge to your own community other than social media? Well, I... I hope, and I've been having this um, this uh, project from the last year that is in pause for for the pandemic. But I am really looking forward to to find a way to create some some more um, pieces in the public space. Not particularly in Oaxaca City, but in places uh, like. Like even the the Jalalah neighborhood, uh, the the walls in the in Jalalah uh, um, in the North Sierra. It is a lot of work to do, and I know I know there is uh, a big campaign to do before being able to do it. I wish I wish it would be as easy or or it. it yeah, I will. I wish I could have all the money in the world just to do it like now. <laughs> but it is. It is very, very, very difficult. I what I what I'm been doing is um, yeah, bringing prints to the to the to the celebrations and sharing the images there. Or uh, there there was this this great idea that I share with uh, three of my dearest. Uh, family and friends from, from Yalala to create a fan scene with images from the town. And I, and I was looking to, to, to spread this fan scene in the celebrations as well. But pandemic happened and there is no celebration. And 
I I think I I been able to to share a couple of them, not as I wish. Uh, they 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 could be they could be shared, but I'm confident there are better times coming, and I think I will find better strategies to follow. You know, one of the things that uh, you know I questions that I had for you that I sent to you in a, in, in, before the talk was, was, you know, whether a book format is something that, you know, I think particularly for this project um, would be something that you could use to disseminate the work um, and have it be accessible and, and have it live on. Um, if that's something that you're interested at all in, I would love to publish a book, but again, it is, you know, the industry and it is not, it is not easy to publish a book. It is not, it, it, it is not easy to find an editorial to do it. And uh, most of the photo, photo books are incredibly exp expensive. Right. No, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, you're talking about a $70 price tag. <laughs> Yeah, and and that's not affordable for for the purpose of this. I I I think I honestly what I'm what I'm looking for is to, to create to to collect the, the a good fund to to do the public art pieces. I I just I, I'm just looking forward to it, and I don't know when I'll be able, but I'm 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 sure at, at some moment I'll be able to do it. Uh, so we have time for one more question, um, and I, I like this question. I think it's a, it's a nice one to end on. Um, Mary and Tom Myers said, what a beautiful part of Mexico. When you close your eyes, which image is the strongest in your mind? Of all my series? Yeah, we'll say of your, of your work. Is there an image that stands out the most to you? I don't close, if you want to close your eyes and think about it. <laughs> but, but yeah, is there, is there something that stands out to you the, the most? The image that I love the most is the image I made of, of my mom from, from my Mestiza series. From Mestiza series. I, I, I really, really like that portrait. My mom is a, a figure of so much power and so much inspiration for me. Can, so, you, can you scroll back to that image real quick just so we can, we can see it for reference? Yes, wait a second because I'm not sure. Yeah, there it is. It was at the beginning. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And from from the other images, I have a lot of them that I have a, a, a lot of, of feelings. And um, I, I think. Um, I think one of the one of the ones that I like the most is uh, the embroidery I, I made with the photo of my sister and I. I think that that's also one of my favorites. It's not particularly one image that I took, but one that I create. Right. Yeah. Well, so Lali, thank you uh, so much for sharing with us. I particularly loved seeing the the picture of your family uh, making the tortillas uh, that you shared with us. Um, it, yeah, that was really great. Um, that was, that's maybe, that's one that stands out to me a lot. I, I really love that image. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, uh, like I said, our next talk is on, uh, April 22nd. Um, and I hope you're able to join us for that. Uh, Sid Lolly, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, We'll keep an eye on your work and I encourage everyone to follow along and they can find you on Instagram. They can find me on Instagram, just uh, as Citlali Fabian and uh, uh, all my, my, my website is the same. So it is, it is very easy to, to find more about me. Just, just with Citlali Fabian, not, not, any, uh, not, not any tricky. Uh, usernames. <laughs> thank you again, and thank you thank all. Thank you, everyone, us. for for attending, and it it was such a pleasure to to be here. It was a pleasure to have you. Everybody, take care. <laughs>